a holistic veterinarian with Holistic Veterinary Healing. And we are going to talk today about holistic healing for animals and what you can learn about your pets for home care and what's available for you with holistic healing for your animals. Um, we are located in Germantown, Maryland, and uh, we've been in practice here since 2013. And I've been in practice for 43 years as a veterinarian and for about 35 years as a holistic veterinarian. Uh, we have uh, an integrative practice where we do both conventional medicine and holistic medicine. And um, we provide both wellness care and holistic modalities which we'll go over with you in just a few minutes in this presentation. Holistic medicine is a little bit different than regular medicine because we look at the animal as a whole and we like to find the root cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms. We view the body as a whole and we look at the body, mind, and spirit. Um, in doing so, we do recognize that we are what we eat, so we do specialize in uh, nutritional counseling for the animals and spend a lot of time in looking at what we uh, feed our animals. The integrative medicine wheel includes all aspects of their healing, and um, it includes surgery, pharmaceutical, um, herbs, nutraceutical medicine, lifestyle at home, behavioral medicine, the mind and body, and energy healing. There are many different modalities that are available for um, the animals and also humans. Um, these are just the ones we're gonna talk about today. Acupuncture, alpha stem, aquapuncture, Chinese and Western medicine, herbs, chiropractic, energy healing, essential oils, flower essences, food allergy testing, a thing called gold bead implants, healing with whole foods, homeopathy, microbiome restorative therapy, moxibustion, neoplasine therapy, non-anesthetic dentistry, nutraceuticals, stem cell and PRP therapy, UVB ozone and proozone therapy. In conventional medicine, they spend a lot of time with your animals talking about needing vaccines and updating your animals on vaccines. But what you don't recognize is that vaccines cause inflammation and immune stress. Uh, we prefer to limit vaccines and use vaccine titers and look to see what they're actually due for because we can look at their antibody levels for the vaccines and see if they actually are protective and don't need the vaccine only give the ones that are necessary for the patient's lifestyle. Also separate the vaccines. Don't give a multivalent vaccine like a five-in-one vaccine. Don't give distemper, parvo, Lyme, lepto, rabies all at one time. We also limit the vaccines and don't give many of the vaccines that the conventional vets recommend. Lyme vaccine is only 50 to 60 percent effective and it also has caused autoimmune disease, so we don't recommend the Lyme vaccine. The Lepto vaccine is only 30% effective, and it um, is transmitted by rat and rodent urine in the city streets that puddle in the city alleyways, and also by cow urine in the country. So it's not a big disease of suburban dogs, so we don't use the Lyme and the Lepto vaccine for our patients. Um, those are two that you can eliminate. Distemper parvo, we recommend titering every three years and looking to see if the antibody levels remain high. And most of them remain high for six to 12 years, so we don't give the distemper parvo vaccine regularly every three years, only when the vaccine titer drops below protective levels. So basically, the dogs get a rabies vaccine every three years or titer it every year and then also a distemper parvo when the vaccine titer drops below protective levels. Cats, we vaccinate um, for rabies if they're an outdoor cat. And uh, if they're on a good, wholesome, healthy diet, which would be like a raw food diet or a canned food, holistic pet store diet, 
then uh, they don't need all the distemper and rhinotrach and Khaleesi vaccines. Their immune system's healthy with a good diet. And so we don't vaccinate them for the other diseases. That's where we go into healing them with whole foods. With whole foods, it increases their vital force, it creates balance, it helps their immune system. When you heat process dry food, it creates two carcinogens to form. Uh, one thing you can do is watch a movie called Pet Fools. It's on YouTube or Amazon Prime videos. And uh, you'll learn a lot about feeding your animals and eliminating dry foods out of their diet. Also dry foods are 50 to 60% carbohydrate, which is also carcinogenic because the carbohydrates are sugar and sugar feeds cancer. There's a debate about feeding no grain foods and whether it causes heart disease. One thing you can do is add quinoa to their diet and also add taurine to their diet and still feed no grain food. Natural feeding is important. Dogs and cats are carnivores. Uh, one of the best raw foods on the market is called Answers Pet Food. The Answers Raw Goat's Milk uh, is a good natural supplement to all diets because it is a nutritional supplement that is nutritionally complete. It has, it's a live food, it has probiotics, and natural feeding also um, is important because uh, raw foods are good because the animals have a high acid pH in their stomach and they can handle raw food. Um, IBD and leaky gut syndrome is something that happens in animals and in people but when we aren't feeding them good food, they can get leaky gut syndrome, which leads to ear infections, UTI, skin disease, and cancers. What happens is when they have food allergens or inflammatory food particles that irritate the gut, then they get little punctate lesions in the gut and those food particles leak through the gut, cause, called leaky gut syndrome, and those food particles go to the liver and create antigen antibody complexes at the liver, which then radiate out to the skin, the ears, the thyroid, the joints, and cause all the itises, which cause chronic disease states. Then what happens is you take your pet to the conventional vet and they treat all the tip of the iceberg. They treat the ear infections, they treat the skin infections, they treat the thyroid disease, but they don't go after the root cause which is what we do. The root cause is the leaky gut syndrome or the food allergy. And that's where we can stop the disease process from repeating itself. In feeding raw food, um, we recommend Answers Raw Food, which is a fresh frozen raw food because it's not pasteurized and it's fermented. The fermentation causes 200 species of probiotics to form. It also has antihistamines and anti-cancer supplements and immunoglobulins. You also have the possibility of feeding home prepared raw food um, or top quality dog food has, is a local raw food source and they have one called healthy variety mix which is the meat and vegetables ground up together. Canine Cravings is a company uh, that's online and they sell to pet stores locally and heretoday.com is another company that sells fresh frozen raw food. Answers Raw Goat's Milk, we already talked about, has uh, the probiotics, antihistamines, immunoglobulins, and anti-cancer supplements. To talk about Answers Pet Food, we had uh, several case studies where Answers would provide food for cases to help them with their health issues. And Allie was a one-year-old female spade plot hound mix. She was almost dead. She just laid in the corner all day with no desire to even stand. She refused all food. The owner had to lift her up. She walked into walls like a weak drunk. She refused to allow other dogs near her and she seizured several times a day. She only weighed 34 pounds and she was emaciated with no muscle. Her liver enzymes were elevated. As you can see, her ALT was 826 and it's supposed to be below 131. Her bile acid, which is her liver function test, was very elevated. It's supposed to be below three. Her diagnosis was a possible liver shunt and severe liver toxicity. We put her on 
answers raw goat's milk liquid diet only and fermented fish stock and cow's milk kefir. So it was an all liquid diet. As you can see, it was 32 ounces of the liquid goat's milk and cow's milk kefir and eight ounces of fish stock. She responded remarkably to the new diet. Instead of running and hiding at mealtime, she sang for her food. A year later, she weighed 10 pounds more, 11 pounds more, 45.2 pounds, and was active and playful and no seizures. Her liver enzymes and bile acids remained high in spite of how well she was doing. She lived for um, four more years and uh, did very well in spite of her liver disease. Benny is a six-year-old coon hound with protein losing enteropathy and seizures. That means he couldn't process his proteins when he ate and he was very skinny and losing protein out his digestive system and um, his proteins were very low. He was put on an Answers Raw goat's milk and fermented fish stock diet. The goat's milk is super high in taurine that reduces inflammation in the brain, helping prevent seizures. And the fish stock is high in gelatin, which is known to help prevent seizures in high in glycine, which has a calming effect on the brain. His albumin is gone from 1.9, and it's supposed to be above 2.5 with ascites, which is fluid in the belly, all the way up to 2.7, and the ascites totally resolved. His body weight went from 58.6 pounds to now 74 pounds. He's off his anti-seizure medicine called zanisamide, and he's only on half a dose of Keppra, and his seizures are just little petite mal seizures only every two to four months, whereas he was seizuring practically every day. And then there's Zoe. She's a four-year-old Labrador retriever with idiopathic epilepsy. Every two weeks, she was seizuring. We put her on Answers Raw Goat's Milk, Fermented Milk, Cow's Milk Kefir, and Fermented Fish Stock. She's off all anticonvulsant meds, and she's now eating the goat's milk and the raw food and is off a liquid diet. And she has only had three seizures the first year and no seizures for three years and she's doing great, and she's not on any medication. You also have the possibility of feeding a home-cooked diet, and if you do choose that, then you would feed about 1.5% of the body weight of cooked meat twice a day, and some options to feed are beef stew meat, chicken breast, ground chicken, turkey, pork, lamb, and also cooked vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, carrots, zucchini. And the dosages would be about cats, one tablespoon. These are twice a day doses, excuse me. Small dog, about two tablespoons. Medium dog, three to four tablespoons. And a large dog, about a quarter to a third a cup of vegetables. Potatoes feed cancer, so I would avoid potatoes, but squash and pumpkin is okay. And instead of grains, you could feed quinoa. A ketogenic diet is something that uh, you can use to heal cancer and also avoid cancer, but usually we use it to heal cancer. This lowers the sugar in the body. As a result, the liver breakdowns fat into ketones as an alternative energy source for the body. Ketosis is a natural metabolic state that occurs anytime we have low sugar in our bodies. Ketones are a poor fuel for cancer cells to use to grow and spread so the cancer cells starve. What's more, ketones can also enhance mitochondrial health and function over time, protecting your pet against even getting cancer. For those that are interested in a ketogenic diet, you have two options. You can go to ketopetsanctuary.com and they have detailed instructions on how to feed a ketogenic diet or you can go to Answers Pet Food, and uh, they don't have it on their website, but they, you can call and get instructions on how to feed. They do have instructions on feeding it uh, a four to one ratio, three to one ratio, two to one ratio, or one to one ratio. Very simple way is to do a one to one ratio, which is giving about uh, 50, 49% uh, rough detailed meat and 51% raw goat's milk per day. And what you do is you go to answerspetfood.com to the feeding calculator 
put in the dog's body weight and their activity level, and then it'll calculate out how many calories you need in the detailed raw food and how many calories you need in the raw goat's milk. Figuring that you're gonna use about 49% um, of those calories in the detailed meat and 51% in the goat's milk. It'll give you how many calories you need per day. As an example of the ketogenic diet for cancer, we had a dog named Kanaya, who was a 13-year-old pit bull mix. She presented for circling and extreme pacing and not sleeping for several months. Prozac did not help. The tentative diagnosis was a brain tumor, but the owner could not afford an MRI to confirm it. We put her on CBD oil, stress away essential oil, and calming essence. We began an answers ketogenic diet. The circling stopped, she slept through the night, she relaxed during the day with much less pacing for two months when she started pacing again. Then we started a Chinese herb called stasis in the mansion of the mind, and she did well for three more months. Now food allergy testing, we do quite a lot in this practice because as you know, we are what we eat. And with food allergy testing, we can see what's going on with the body and what's causing the inflammatory bowel disease and the tip of the iceberg disease states like we talked about before. This dog is a male neutered pit bull mix that we've presented for severe allergies. He'd been to five vets in four years. All we did, if you can look at these photos on the left, is what he looked like when he came in. He had severe allergies of his chest, his feet, his belly, his face, and nothing had helped. He'd been on prednisone, he'd been on fungal medicine, he'd been on antibiotics, all different medications. All we did was food allergy testing. Changed his diet based on the food allergy testing, and we saw him one month later, and that's what he looked like one month later just by food allergy testing and changing his diet according to the food allergy test. Totally resolved. This is a cute slide. It's an impressive skill, but he only uses it to complain. <laughs> no more dry food. Even Gandhi said, you are what you eat. Acupuncture has been used for centuries, and we use acupuncture points that are connected to the nervous system. They release endorphins and serotonins that then go to the brain and help the flow of chi and restore homeostasis. And they also secrete these compounds that decrease inflammation and help with pain. And they unblock block channels in the area that the needle points, the points are needled. We can also use electroacupuncture to stimulate the points even more. This one was really cute. Alpha Stim is a microelectro technology. It's ideal for patients that don't like needles. It's sort of like a radio frequency and cats like it. And we have a couple little small dogs that like it. Um, it's just a radio frequency. You just put it on their ears, turn on the radio frequency. It takes about 20 minutes and it works as well as acupuncture. Aquapuncture is another um, acupuncture technique that we use a lot in cats. It's diluted vitamin B12. It's injected into acupuncture points. It's good for what we call heat conditions. And it's also an energy and appetite stimulant. It helps the nervous system. It's good for the gastrointestinal system. And it's fabulous for cats because then the cats don't have to sit there with the needles in. And it takes all of five to 10 minutes to do the procedure. Now we do use a lot of herbs in the clinic. There are Chinese herbs, Ayurvedic herbs, and Western herbs. The herbal formulas are used for centuries and they're good for any ailments. They're plant source, they're gentle yet powerful, and they go after the root cause. We use a company called Jing Tong. Jing Tong Herbal comes out of Florida and all their herbs are produced in the US. They don't come from China. 
and uh, they, most of them, a lot of them are labeled based on what they're used for, and some of them are labeled with their Chinese name. As you can see, they're very simple to understand. Hindquarter weakness, cervical formula, body sore, crystal stone formula, damp heat skin, four paws damp heat, ear damp heat, and then Shengling Baiju is the Chinese name for diarrhea. And then we have Xiao Fu Shuyu for bloody urine and bladder tumors, Xiao Chai Hu Tong for bloody tumors of the liver, spleen, and pancreas, Shui Fu Shu Yang for bloody tumors above the diaphragm for like mediastinal lung tumors and mast cell tumors, Max formula for fleshy tumors or lymphoma, Stasis formula for more condensed tumors like adenocarcinoma or squamous cell tumors, breast stasis for mammogram tumors, and bone stasis for osteosarcoma. Those are just a few of them. We have many more than that. Ayurvedic herbs, easy to understand. Livet 2 for detoxing and liver support. Rentone, renal is the Latin term for kidney. So rentone is for kidney and bladder support. Trifol is digestive support. Neem Plus is a skin support, parasite, and fungal. Bacoba Plus is cognitive support for like dementia or aging of the brain. Ashwagandha for high blood pressure, geriatric support, and immune support. Western herbs. Buck Mountain uh, makes a very good product called Neoplazine, which is excellent for mast cell tumors. And we give that as a liquid medicine that is given in the food. And they also make a licorice that's good for anti-inflammation, good for itching and adrenal support. Then they make a parasite dust that's really good for cats with fleas. Milk thistle, very concentrated for liver support and regeneration and a wonderful topical ointment called wound balm. Is that grass? Yeah, but I take it for medicinal purposes only. Chiropractic, we do what we call um, minimally invasive light touch chiropractic uh, instead of the very forceful chiropractic. So your animals uh, are very responsive to that and you would like to see that too. It's not a invasive chiropractic. It's for subluxated vertebrae, frozen, frozen joints, realignment, repairs the blood flow, decreases pain, keeps the body fluid. It's called network chiropractic. Both myself and my technician, Robin Bird. Robin Bird's been a tech, vet tech for 27 plus years. We both do energy healing. Most of my clients make appointments with Robin for this. Uh, we use, utilize the body's life force, and it's a good addition to acupuncture treatments. Um, the different forms of energy healing are Reiki, shamanic healing, chakra balancing, and just what we call energy healing, hands-on healing. It works on the blueprint template for disease, where disease starts. So it's a good addition to other forms of holistic therapy. Essential oils are very good for holistic medicine because it's the oil of the plant that is the defense mechanism of the plant. It's nature's purest form of healing. You can use it for diffusing and inhalation or apply it to the fur. You can apply it to acupuncture needles. You can take it orally and it restores the life force. We use Young Living essential oils because they are medical grade. I don't recommend getting essential oils off the internet that you don't know what the source is because they quite often have different chemicals in them and are not medical grade and they can be toxic to pets. Frankincense is a good anti-cancer oil. Copaiba is very good anti-inflammatory and anti-pain. Lavender is good calming oil. Geranium is good anti-flea and tick topically. We use that twice a week over the shoulders and over the rump. Stress away, good for anti-anxiety. And digest helps with digestion. Flower essence care uses the vibrational frequency of
vibrational frequency of flower essences. Our bodies resonate at different frequencies, commonly used for behavioral emotional issues. You can use Bach flower remedies, but we like this one called calming essence because it doesn't have the alcohol base that the Bach flower essences have. This aromatherapy candles is a cute one. Gold bead implants. These are wonderful for patients that have hip and knee and spinal arthritis that uh, don't either don't do well with acupuncture or have to come in so frequently that they do better off if we actually just put the gold bead implants in those points so they don't have to keep coming in for acupuncture. Placed acupuncture points, it causes constant stimulation for chronic ailments, arthritis. Some people use it for seizures too. As you can see in that x-ray, those are the gold beads implanted at the acupuncture points around the hips. We recently had a dog named Chester who had severe arthritis in the knees and the hips, that he was very straight-legged in the rear, and his feet were placed totally straight together where he couldn't walk without his feet touching together. We did gold implants on him, and now he's running down the hall, his feet wide apart, and he's a totally new dog. And here's Jax and Sweetie, one-year-old and five-year-old pit bull mix and mastiff mix. They, had severe, they have severe hip dysplasia with lameness, major struggling with acupuncture, very high strung. Sweetie would actually drop to the floor if you put one needle into her and turn around and try to bite you. And there was no way we could do acupuncture on her. They, they had such severe hip dysplasia that they could hardly walk. And we did gold implants on them in 2015. It's now 2020. They are running around on a farm and doing great. And they aren't having any acupuncture or any further treatment and they're doing fabulous. Homeopathy is a nano pharma pharmacy and it uses the idea that like treats like. It works with the idea of using the vital force and is a great therapy for cats because cats don't really like the taste of herbs and homeopathy just is either dissolved in water or is a lactose pill. So it just tastes like sugar pill. Uh, when we use it like treating like, the example is like Nux Vomica is uh, an herb for vomiting. And if the symptom is vomiting, then we use an, a substance that would cause vomiting. And the idea behind it is the body looks at a symptom as a problem and the body wants to heal that problem. So it says, oh, I'm vomiting, so I need to work, create a vital force to heal that problem. And the body does something with its immune system to heal that vomiting, but then it gets stuck and it doesn't fix it. So then you bring along the vital force or the energy medicine of Nux Vomica that has the vitality of that vomiting and the body recognizes it and says, oh yeah, I, have to, I forgot that I need to work on that. And it wakes up that vital force to go work at it again. And then it heals it again. So Arnica is used for bruising and trauma, Hepar Salt for abscesses that are sensitive to the touch, Nux Vomica for detox, toxins, vomiting, and hairballs, Listen to detox the rabies vaccine, Thuya to detox all other vaccines, Hypericum for nerve pain, Aconite for sudden acute afflictions and fear and also for fevers, Arsenicum Album for the Freddy Cat and fear, and diarrhea, Staphysagria for incision pain. When I list these different remedies and herbs and nutraceuticals, and you refer back to this at another time, this is for you to use, utilize this on your pets later on. Post-dental extraction, we send home Arnica and Hypericum. Post-surgery, we send home Arnica and Staphysagria. For abscesses, we use Hepar salt. For vaccinosis problems, we use Lysin or Thuya. For renal disease, we use, or hairballs, we, and vomiting, we use Nux vomica. For seizures, we 
possibly use aconite. For bleeding, we use phosphorus. Another modality is laser therapy. It's very non-invasive. It uses photon light therapy to help the cell interaction. Works on the mitochondria, rapid cell growth, wound healing, anti-inflammatory, increases vascularity and nerve function. You don't wanna use laser therapy around fast growing cancer cells because of the rapid cell growth, increased vascularity. We talked about neoplasine a few moments ago when we mentioned Buck Mountain. It's a plant alkaloid that kills malignant tumors. It goes after fast growing cancer cells. You can use it orally, injectable, or topical. Orally, we start out with a certain amount twice a day in the food, and you have to avoid anti inflammatories when you use it. It's great for mast cell tumors, fibrosarcoma, the topical. You apply and leave it on for 24 hours. You wash it off and apply wound balm as it debrides the tumor. Here's an example of applying it topically to a mast cell tumor. This is what it looks like after a few days of having applied it topically. Uh, it just eats it up and then it heals it in. The body naturally scars it down and that's what it looks like afterwards. Non-anesthetic dentistry called houndstooth. It's offered at our clinic four times a year. We use it when extractions are not needed. It's a great alternative to anesthetic dentistry. The pets remain calm in the technician's lap for the procedure. As you can see, this dog is just lying in her lap and she's using a piezo cleaner on the teeth. Nutraceuticals, here is a picture of Western herbs that we use, nutritional support, vitamin and mineral, Ayurvedic and Western herbs, glandular herbs, anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory. For cardi cardiovascular support, we can use CV formula by RX Vitamins, cardiovascular support by Garmon, CoQ10 by RX Vitamins, Ultra EFA, which is a fish oil by RX Vitamins. For skin, we use Pet Health OPC, Allerplex and Antronex by Standard Process for allergies. For the gastrointestinal system, we use Nutrigest for vomiting and IBD. For GI NCAP, we use for vomiting and diarrhea and IBD. RX Clay, we use for diarrhea and IBD. Probi is a fermented probiotic. We use it for digestive support, diarrhea, and IBD. Hepato support and liquid hepato. We use for liver disease, pancreatrophin for pancreatitis. Immune support, we have liquid immuno, curcuvet, CS options for cancer patients, onco support for cancer patients, and nutritional support. Musculoskeletal, we have boswellia, which is anti-inflammatory for arthritis bone and joint, pain plus, and glucosamine, very concentrated product. Neurologic problems, we have Nervagesic, Neurotrophin, Calming Essence, and Nutricom. For kidney and urinary bladder, we have urinary tract for cystitis, incontinence support, canine renal support, feline renal support, RX renal feline, Aminobast, all of those for kidney disease, and tinkle tonic for urinary problems in the bladder. Anti-anxiety, anti-seizure, appetite stimulant, anti-pain, and anti-tumor, we can use EndoBlend, which is a full spectrum hemp oil, or Lazarus Natural, which is a full spectrum hemp oil for dogs and cats. One example of the use of nutraceuticals and Chinese Ayurvedic herbs was Jack, who was a 10-year-old border collie mix, had a hepatocellular nodular hyperplasia or hepatic carcinoma. I think they believed it was a hepatocarcinoma. He did well for 22 months with this disease, which is pretty good. His liver enzymes and his bile acid liver function tests were all elevated. 
the abdominal ultrasound done three times all showed large liver with multiple expansive nod nodules. We put them on a product called low dose naltrexone, which helps the immune system, hepato support, Livet 2, a fermented wheat germ product called Shield for Pets powder, a CBD oil called Canapet, and CS Options, which is a whole medicinal mushroom supplement. We also put them on Four Marvels powder to nourish the spleen and liver and clear dampness, and a Chinese herb called Geishe Shu Yu Tong for bloody tumors about between the diaphragm and the bladder. We put them on medicinal mushroom extract, which is an anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory product, and two medicinal, two medicinal mushroom extracts, AHCC and beta-glucan. I think all these products are what kept him alive for 22 months, and he did very well. The next modality is stem cell and PRP therapy, good for bone on bone arthritis. It's a regenerative cell therapy so that it can regenerate the cartilage between the bones. We use the adipose fat tissue from the body. Generally, we get the falciform ligament inside the belly. Simple cell to cell different, simple cell to cell differentiated cell regeneration and repair. Paris was a nine-year-old female spay Labrador retriever. She had severe elbow dysplasia and arthritis of the um, toe joints. Stem cell therapy of the elbows and the um, toe joints. Much improvement in mobility and pain control. Ozone therapy is a big part of our practice, and not too many veterinarians in the country are doing this. Probably only about 250 veterinarians are doing ozone therapy. UVB and ozone therapy for pets treats bacterial, viral, fungal, autoimmune, cancer, kidney failure, liver disease, Lyme disease, tick disease, FELV, FIV, feline coronavirus, toxoplasmosis, and lepto. It can be given rectally, it can be given as a gas, it can be given as a sub-Q saline around tumors, and also as UVB ozone IV therapy. You can flush surgery sites with it, and you can flush the mouth after dentals. Here's a picture. Right here is the ozone machine. And then this is the IV ozone saline flask that we hook up the ozone machine to. This is the ultraviolet light machine. And this is where we um, have the <clears throat> ozonated saline in the blood and pass it through the UV light. And then we give it back to the patient IV. We have a few cases that we'll go over that did very well with UVB ozone therapy. Lily was a nine-year-old female spade Maltese. She had left lung lobe carcinoma, which is cancer, with proeffusion, which is fluid outside the lungs in the chest. She had an 18 and a half month survival. And this was very unusual because she presented with fluid in the chest. And the vets thought she only had two weeks to live. She had a history of recurrent UTIs, abdominal pain, Cushing's disease, left-sided facial paralysis, lack of appetite, acute abnormal breathing. She presented with cancer of the lung and liver. She had 85 cc's of blood removed from the left side of her chest, 45 cc's of blood removed from the right side of her chest. They were feeding her primal raw and organic chicken. We put her on the Shui Fu Shu Yu Tong, which was a Chinese herb for bloody tumors above the diaphragm. Yunnan Bai Yao, a Chinese herb to prevent and stop bleeding. Mycotriplex, which was a medicinal mushroom with anti-tumor effects and immune support. Neoplazine, 
the alkaloid herb that goes after fast growing cancer cells, answers raw goat's milk, which we talked about before. We did rectal ozone every three days for a month. We treated the Cushing's naturally with HMR lignans and melatonin. A month later, the ultrasound liver masses were gone. Lung tumor was slightly larger, but very little pleural effusion. We then started UVB ozone weekly for 45 days, every two weeks for five months, every three to four weeks for 10 and a half months. Her 18 and a half months survival was good quality. Then there was Patch, a 12 year old male neutered border collie, had a heart based tumor with pericardial effusion, that's blood around the heart. We didn't drain that fluid. All we did was UV ozone weekly for two months and every two weeks for four, one month and weekly for two months. And we put them on Yunnan Baiyao, a Chinese herb to prevent and stop bleeding. Neoplasing was only used one month. Shui Fu Shuyu only used one month. Owner couldn't afford raw or home cooked diet, so he was on no grain dry food. This dog was completely cured in five months as verified by ultrasound. Did well with no recurrence for four years, died of aging changes. Then there was Tiger, 15 year old male neutered Yorkie. Mediastinal mass filling the anterior chest cavity, coughing all the time. The regular vet didn't know how he could breathe and expected him to die in days. Survival 11 months with holistic care with very little coughing. And what we did for him was UVB ozone every three weeks for 11 months, a home cooked diet, medicinal mushroom extracts, AHCC and beta glucan, fermented wheat germ extract, shield for pets, CBD oil, mushroom defense, answers raw goat's milk, and hydrocodone tabs. And then Sounder, this was pretty good, nine-year-old male neutered pit bull mix, diagnosed with a five-pound hemangiosarcoma spleen tumor and mild heartworm positive, UVB ozone every three weeks, whole medicinal mushroom anti-tumor support, called CS options, nutritional support, Yunnan Biao, CBD oil by Canapet, medicinal mushroom extracts, HCC, beta-glucan, Shai Chow Hutong for the liver and spleen, acupuncture every three weeks. He had an excellent survivor for two years and eight months and did great. Then there's Juliet, UVB ozone therapy. This was a cat that was 10 years old with kidney failure. Presented in July of 2014 with a BUN 105 and it's supposed to be below 30. Creatinine is 7.8, supposed to be below 1.8. Phosphorus of 11, supposed to be below four. Very dilute urine with an active urine. Treated her with sub-Q fluids, aquapuncture, and feline renal support. She began eating and stopped vomiting. But she came in in December, months later, and she was recumbent, cold ears and feet, significant weight loss. She was basically dying. She hadn't eaten for a week, and she was dying on the table. We didn't repeat the blood work, but I'm sure it was worse than before because money was an issue. We did UVB ozone weekly for a month and she began eating within three days of the treatment, even though she was dying on the table. And within 10 days, <clears throat> 10 days her creatinine was down to 3.4 and her phosphorus was 4.9. Actually, she began eating as soon as she got home from the UVB ozone therapy. Her creatinine remained at that level until she died in June of 2018, four years later from when she was diagnosed with kidney failure, and four years later from when she was dying on the table. That's remarkable for a cat with kidney failure. Then there's Elvira. Look at her picture. She had osteosarcoma of her left front leg in August of 2014 and had an amputation 
and then was diagnosed with a lung tumor a year later, doing well with no symptoms to date. And look at the size of that tumor in her chest. UVB ozone every four weeks with Shui Fu Shu Yu and the two medicinal mushroom extracts. And she's living with this tumor that big. <laughs> Microbiome restorative therapy, who gives a shit? Fecal transfer, restores gut flora, IBD, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, immune strength, cancer. Not only are we, we are what we eat, but we are what's in our gut. We have so many microbacteria or microbiome that they are important to our health. And we need to keep our gut flora healthy. So many of our patients have a poor microbiome and we have found that we can heal disease by doing fecal transfers. And this is, an, is up and coming even in the human field. So those are all the holistic therapies for animals. And many of these are being utilized today and our pets are healing because of it. And what we can do is recognize that if we look at our animal as a whole and know that we can treat them with many modalities, then we can keep them healthy and keep them longer and happy. And hopefully this has enlightened you to many different things that we can do for your pets. And I hope that this has helped you with knowing what else you can do by limiting their vaccines, feeding them better, and knowing what other modalities that you can turn to whenever you have a problem. If you have any questions, you can reach us at Holistic Veterinary Healing. Our phone number is 240-715-6570. I hope this has been helpful for you. And I thank you very much. Thank you.